Last time we reflected on the difference which the resurrection of Jesus makes to death itself. Yeah. But, my friend, when you have a diagnosis like yours, isn't that when, as they say, the rubber really hits the road? It is indeed, David, exactly so. So I'm going to reflect in this session on the difference the resurrection of Jesus makes to me personally here in this situation. Right. So death, the final enemy, has been defeated. Okay. Yet here I am under sentence of death with inoperable cancer. Ron, you say that in such a matter-of-fact way. How does this get dealt with by the resurrection of Jesus? Well, first of all, I think I have to face up to it and not run away from it. It's the first thing to say. But the resurrection of Jesus means that death has been defeated. But then I say, well, well what about me then? Yeah. Saving a miracle, mm -hmm. and I will talk about that in the next dialogue, I am on the way out. <laughs> and family and friends are queuing up to visit me and express their love and appreciation. Yeah. And I am extremely grateful for all those good wishes and prayers. I am also very grateful for the life I have led I come from a stable and loving family. Mm. I had a really good education, mm. a demanding but fulfilling career, mm. and of course I have a wonderful wife and family of my own. Mm. So what difference does the resurrection of Jesus make to me personally? Well, it actually makes a colossal difference right. because it means that death is not the end. There is much more to come. Now, I know that's a cliche, but death becomes the gateway to eternal life. And I shall be more alive than I have ever been. Wow. The resurrection of Jesus has filled me with hope in the face of death. Would I be right in saying that you understand eternal life not just as life without end, but a quality of life. You said more alive than you've ever been. Yes, it does mean that. Right. But, you know, it's not always the case for folks when death comes <laughs> along, is it? No. I mean, not every funeral is focused on this isn't the end and they're not hopeful, are they? No. I have conducted so many funerals mm. in my career that I have lost count of them. Yeah. There have been... Sudden deaths, violent deaths, people shot at shot on their doorstep, wow. car accidents, as well as death after long-term illness. Yeah. One bereaved family was so at war with each other that I had to have a police escort yeah. in church sure. and, no, I'm not joking, and at the cemetery in case the warring factions had a fight but then took it out on me. Oh, wow. The, but the biggest contrast in funerals is between that of a believing Christian and that of a non-believer, and that's that word hope. Uh -huh. All funerals have many things in common. Sadness, a sense of loss, mm. and sometimes real anger at what has happened. But what they don't all have in common is hope. For non-believers, death is the end. There is nothing else beyond it. So it can be like and feel like staring into a black hole. Mm. But Christians can still look forward to the future, even at a funeral. Look forward, Ron. Yeah. Because the resurrection of Jesus means that there is more to come eternal life on a renewed earth with the risen Jesus right at the centre. But don't you feel in any way sad as well as hopeful? Well, yes. Of course I'm sad 
at the thought of leaving Joan, my family, my friends, mm -hmm. and knowing me, <laughs> there will doubtless be things that I have left undone or unsaid. Mm -hmm. But the future beyond the grave looks good, all because of the death and resurrection of Jesus.